Well, if you've seen some of my previous videos, you'll know I work on about anything, or at least I'll look at it. I've had some successful failures and some total failures, which I really didn't post. But anyhow, this time it's a Sharp ERA460 cash register brought in from a cookie store and it's totally dead. I have it plugged in. I have it powered on. Okay, here is the kilowatt with the cash register plugged into it. 10.0 watts that it's drawing. So it's doing something. I just don't know what. Well, let's see if we can figure out how to get into this thing and take a look at it. Well, after pulling and prodding and pounding and prying, I found a couple screws and took them out and then the top just popped off. So yeah, there's the main power transformer. That's what's drawing the 10 watts. So here's the terminals for the power supply. And then here's an STR2024. I need to look that up and find out what it does. Here's a small transformer and a big power transistor on a heatsink. Some kind of a switch mode power supply. A big 4700 microfarad at 50 volt cap there. A 2200 at 50. A bunch of small little caps scattered about the board. But I don't get anything. No fluorescent display. No nothing. Something's missing in here. A couple fuses back here. Let's check those first. Okay, with no power applied, good, and good. Both fuses are good. So now we need to apply some power and take a look around here and see if there's any test points listed on this board as to where I should have some voltage. All right, well, I'm fairly unfamiliar with the cash register, so where do you start on this thing? Well, let's look and make sure the transformer is outputting voltage to begin with. And I do have 30.7 volts coming out of the transformer, AC. So let's go to DC volts. I found a ground over here. And here's a bridge rectifier, so let's see what we have coming out of the fuses. 16 volts, 24 volts. I need to find out what this STR2024 does. And then here's the backup battery. I've got 5.6 volts going into it with the power on. And with the power off, 5.5 and decreasing. Anyhow, I checked it previously and it was at 3.4 volts. It is a 3.6 volt, 150 milliamp hour battery. It's probably just a nickel cadmium or nickel metal hydride, I'm not sure. But it is retaining voltage, so it should have enough to supply power to the backup RAM in this unit to keep it from going brain dead. Next, I'm just gonna go ahead and search STR2024 and see what that thing does. Well, it turns out the STR2000 series is based upon the last two digits, whether it be a 5 volt, 12, 13, 15, or 24 volt output. So the pin configuration is pin 5 is input, pin 1 is output through a coil and a filter cap. So let's look at that coil and see what kind of voltage we have on the output. I believe we have 24 volts, and I believe that is correct. So from ground to pin 5, we have 40 volts input. Here's the output choke, and we have 24.8 volts on the output. Do we have any AC ripple? I don't know where to go from here. I did manage to find a schematic on this unit, and since I'm not getting a fluorescent display, this is the vacuum fluorescent 1 and 2. This is the filament, the heater for the fluorescent. And then I notice a 47 microfarad 50 volt cap here and a 3.3 50 volt cap here. So I want to check those. Now on the 47, I'd be happy if it was maybe 1 ohm, 1 and a half ohms. The 3.3, maybe 4 or 5 ohms. So let's go ahead and check those two capacitors and see how they actually test. So I've got the ESR meter set up here and we're just past zero, that's okay. So this is gonna be the 3.3 microfarad capacitor right here and I'm about 100. This is the 47 microfarad right here and I'm at 20 ohms. So I'm thinking, let's go ahead and change those capacitors. I don't even know what that one is, that's C8. It is absolutely dry. This is C15. Oh, it's terrible, wow. Is every capacitor on this board just that bad? Oh, that one's pretty good. There's a C13, can I even get to the bottom of it? Yeah, that one's pretty good. Of course, these are in circuit, so at a minimum, I think we should look at these capacitors right here. I'll just go ahead and pop the board out. We'll zip them off real fast and slap some new ones in there and see if it makes any kind of a difference. Okay, so in doing some troubleshooting, I pulled the vacuum fluorescent display out of the unit. And so I thought I would go ahead and uh, just with a paper towel and some glass cleaner, go ahead and give it a wipe down. This thing's been alive for many years. Go ahead and try to give it a, a little spit shine here while I can. Also clean the inside of the panel, like how dirty that was. Maybe get a little bit clearer display on it. Oh, look at that. Ooh. Okay, let's go ahead and throw it back together. Give it a test. Okay, here we go. Let's go ahead and turn the power on and see if we get any kind of display at this point. Yes, there it is. Power on. Get a display. All right. 
So I'm going to call this unit repaired. Just needed a refill on the capacitors in the little switch mode power supply that actually powers the fluorescent display. So I just got to go ahead and finish putting the rest of the screws back in it here and get it back to my customer. Sure, it's going to be very happy to get this thing up and running once again. Also, I'm going to return what I found underneath the drawer, but here's the problem. If I hit any key on the unit, like I'm going to try to program it, I just get a zero and it kind of locks up. But if I turn the unit off, do the reset procedure holding these two buttons down while powering the unit up in the program two mode, it does a reset and it even prints, I don't know if you can see it on the ribbon, program reset. So if I try to enter a number, like I'm gonna set the time or the date, which have, as I think is 2561. The first button I press, it locks up. Nothing works now. The feed is the only thing that works. I can't turn it back off. I have to put it back in program two, shut the power off, hold these two buttons down, and I get a reset again. And everything's fine. The key switch works. I get different settings. The display now works, which did not before, but no buttons do absolutely anything. So I think, unfortunately, this is going to be another successful failure. I did end up replacing, I think, five or six Samwa capacitors. Always been problematic, and they did ESR very bad. I've checked the backup battery. It's in perfect condition. It's reading 3.6 volts, just like it should. I think the memory might be corrupt on this unit from the failing capacitors. I'm not sure. But at this point, I'm going to cut my losses and just give this back to my customer unrepaired as is. Well, I certainly hope you enjoyed the attempt at repairing the Sharp ERA 460 cash register. We did get the display back to work, so that is a bonus. Maybe someone with a little bit more knowledge on these things can give me a clue as to what might be going on and I can contact the customer and let him know. If you enjoyed this successful failure, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below. I try to read all the comments and respond when I have time. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me norcal715videos at gmail.com. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Thanks for making it to the end of this successful failure video. Once again, I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.